Thank you. Well, one, thank you all. The testimony was great uh, that you presented as well as uh, the testimony today. Secretary Rice, you'll be surprised to, to know I agree with you. I think the uh, majority of uh, economic benefits in this recovery has um, accumulated to the wealthy. And it is by government's design that that's occurred. The stimulus wasn't aimed at infrastructure, certainly not job skills. Um, it didn't stimulate new job creation along Main Street. It was focused at uh, bailing out uh, state governments um, and other areas. Uh, the Federal Reserve has pumped trillions of dollars toward Wall Street. Wall Street's roaring, good for them. Middle Street, middle fa class families, Main Street, not so much. Just consider this. Wall Street's uh, index value has almost doubled uh, in this economic uh, recovery. But Main Street, middle class families, their incomes have barely budged. Think about this. In this terribly weak recovery, historically weak, the, the worst, frankly, in the last half century, if it would have just been average, just C grade, just nothing much to speak of, every family four in America would have $12,000 more in their pocket today than they do. $12,000 more to pay utilities, $12,000 more is to shop at that local businesses, $12,000 more is to pay down student debt or avoid it uh, in the first place. So I lay much of the blame and responsibility for middle class struggling with this government and the president shares some of the responsibility, much of that, for that. I think the problem is joblessness. And I, I don't think income inequality is dragging down the economy. I think this weak economy is dragging down income equality. People just aren't finding good paying jobs. Certainly, uh, uh, this Congress and White House aren't focused on that. And I think uh, that is where our greatest effort needs to be getting out, Washington out of the way to allow our small businesses to grow. Washington Post blogger and columnist Ezra Klein, uh, I know he argues inequality is not the defining issue of our time. Instead, he says joblessness is. The fact so many million Americans have given up work. Uh, many more are stuck in jobs and underemployed. So I guess Dr. Winship, Dr. Mature to begin, you know, why isn't joblessness, why, aren't, why isn't this poor recovery really the focus of, of why we should be here today? Dr. Winship. Thanks for the question. Uh, so I, th I think what the administration has done that is, that's been <coughs> unproductive uh, has been to frame everything in this inequality frame. Uh, and I think with all respect, uh, the secretary, secretary does that as well. Uh, uh, all of the ills of, uh, of the economy are sort of laid to rest at um, things that progressives like uh, that have worsened over time. Uh, but the bottom line is that if we could get back to the 1950s and 60s, it's pretty clear what we need. We need the productivity growth that we had back then. Um, we've never, we never saw it before that. We've never seen it since. Uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to imagine a story where inequality is the is the main factor behind that, uh, it, and the best thing that we could do to uh, to reduce the unemployment rate to move people out of long term unemployment uh, into work um, would be to expand economic growth, uh, and and I think the way to do that is not uh, by talking about inequality and demonizing uh, folks at the top who are doing a lot of business investment. Um, I think the way to do it uh, is to try to uh, get some consensus around things that would grow the economy that would not be polarizing. Um, I think we can agree on things like high-skilled immigration. Um, I think we can agree on a deregulation agenda. Uh, I, I know uh, that the chairman supports a, a consumption tax. I think that that would be a very pro-growth uh, reform to, to pursue. Um, and inequality, I think, just uh, it's divisive. It's 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 essentially ensuring that nothing gets done. It's using uh, it's it's using a political issue uh, to guarantee uh, gridlock um, through the rest of, of the president's term, and, uh, and and sort of hoping that uh, that with small size policies like unemployment insurance extension, um, a minimum wage, which uh, I, I agree with uh, my colleague Dr. Kearney that a, a modest uh, minimum wage. Uh, might not do any damage and might actually be helpful. A 40% uh, 
increase uh, would, to an unprecedented uh, historical level, which is what 1010 would be. Uh, it, it, if there's some dispute about what the level was in 1968, depending on how you adjust for the cost of living, 1010 would be would be unprecedented, and the 40 percent increase uh, would be something that we've not seen in a long time in a recovery that's that's sort of still fragile. I think it's a it's just a terrible idea. Uh, we ought to stop stop uh, using these divisive frames and agree on some consensus that everyone would agree would move the, the economy forward. Thank you, Dr. Mature. Thank you. I would agree with Secretary Reich. You know, it is a demand problem. There are consumers out there who don't have the money to buy things. But I think this, the, the seed of all that is coming from joblessness. I mean, this is something that has happened over the course of the recession, that people are, you know, don't have the money and they don't, there doesn't exist enough demand. And I think a lot of it is coming from the fact that they have lost value in their homes and they, have, they are out in the labor market. They don't have jobs and they don't have the wages and the salary to earn enough income to be able to go out there and buy things. <laughs> And I think, uh, you know, the, the current policies to extend, uh, let's say, unemployment benefits, which are intended to help people, I think, you know, the, the intentions are great. I think they, they are intended to help people who have been out of the labor market for so long that they are, have little hope of finding a job. I think we could do much more than simply extending cash assistance benefits for, uh, you know, 72 weeks or 99 weeks. I think after a, a worker has been unemployed for four to five months, uh, they need active help in finding a job. And so coming up with a program that would actually match workers to jobs, yeah. you know, either a wage subsidy program yeah. or, uh, you know, uh, sort of skills training or just on online searches, helping workers find jobs would be much more effective than simply, you know, extending benefits and what happens <coughs> at the end of the 99 weeks when the worker is still unemployed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Dr. Kearney, I know uh, my colleague from Minnesota wants to talk about the value of education and skills and climbing the economic ladder. Secretary Rice, you were so good, are so good to be here today. Let me ask you about the minimum wage. Uh, I come from a Chamber of Commerce background, so helping create small businesses and build a business community. And I know, you know, when you, when you force a, a, a small business with 10 workers to pay $5,000 more a worker each year, no change in productivity, no new customers, just $50,000. It, it may be, in fact, the whole profit for the year that not only does it discourage new hiring, often leads to, to cutting workers' hours, and I know, too, that forced in that situation, uh, small businesses will look to new workers, young workers. Uh, they're more likely to hire those who have had the advantages of a middle-class family and education and a work ethic and all that goes with sort of creating advantages. They're less likely to take chances on a younger worker from a poor community you know, that perhaps hasn't had those chances. So we, in effect, my view, not only do we make small businesses uh, <coughs> make terrible decisions on ours for the workers, make it tough for them to survive, but I really think we remove the lowest rung of the ladder for especially young minority people. <coughs> so my question to you is, as you look at income inequality, have the years that have raised the minimum wage, has that lowered income inequality? In, in, in raising minimum wage over the number of years, ha has that changed it, decreased it, shrunk it? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the last, uh, <coughs> one of the last times I testified before this committee uh, was uh, in 1995, uh, and it was, the subject was, do we raise the minimum wage? Uh, many members of the committee, particularly uh, uh, Republican uh, members, but not exclusively, were concerned about raising the minimum wage because they were concerned about its negative effect on job growth. Uh, at that time, I presented evidence uh, that a raise in the minimum wage, uh, a not a gigantic raise, but a substantial raise, would actually uh, help job growth in terms of creating, as I talked about before, more money in the hands of uh, people who could turn around and, and buy stuff and thereby have a multiply, positive multiplier effect. Uh, now, we did yes, an experiment. I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but, but specifically to the issue of income inequality. Has raising the minimum wage shrunk the income, the difference between the uh, earnings? Well, I was just about to get to the point, uh, Mr. Chairman. In the short term, what we discovered is that raising the minimum wage actually 
uh, was correlated in 1996, 1997, 1998, 1999 with increases in employment, not decreases. Uh, but in the larger, sec uh, se uh, in, in the larger uh, time horizon, uh, we have not raised the minimum wage. Uh, the minimum wage is still 30% now below what it was in 1968. Had we merely maintained the 1968 minimum wage adjusted for inflation, it would be today substantially above $10 an hour. So your, the answer to your question, larger scale answer to your question, is that uh, we have not, in inflation adjusted terms, since 1968, really raised the minimum wage. In fact, the decline of the minimum wage has contributed to widening inequality, uh, particularly among women, because most minimum wage workers are women. If we raise the minimum wage, uh, we would get about 4.6 million people, conservative estimate, uh, out of poverty. Okay. It just seems to me, if I just a quick response, just seems to me, you know, our, our focus shouldn't be on raising the minimum wage. It should be getting people off it in education and skills and jobs, better jobs, how we do it. My okay. Just